Good evening, I'm Maham Kawa with the news making headlines around the world. The National Assembly Speaker leaves for Cairo to chair the emergency session of the Arab Parliamentary Union. The Ministry of Interior announces that all preparations are underway for the last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan. Israel warns thousands of Palestinians in Gaza to evacuate as it resumes airstrikes. And Bashar al-Assad is sworn in for a third seven-year term as president of Syria. <coughs> In our first item, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Subah received this morning at Sea Palace His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Subah. His Highness the Emir also received His Highness Sheikh Jabir al-Mubarak al-Hamad al-Subah, the Prime Minister. received the first deputy prime minister and foreign minister Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah received this afternoon at Chief Palace Ambassador of the United Kingdom to the state of Kuwait Frank Baker on the occasion of ending his term in office His Highness the Emir also received the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Spain to the state of Kuwait, Angel Losada Fernandez, on the occasion of ending his term in office. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received this morning at Chief Palace His Highness Sheikh Jabir Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Subah, the Prime Minister. His Highness the Crown Prince also received the first Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness the Crown Prince then received the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Interior, and Acting Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs Sheikh Mohammed Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness the Crown Prince later received the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, retired Lieutenant General Sheikh Khalid Al Jarrah Al Subah. His Highness the Crown Prince also received the Chairman of the Board and Members of the National Union of Kuwait Students for the Branches of Egypt, United States, Britain and Ireland, France, Australia and Canada. During the meeting, His Highness urged the students to exert more effort and get the best education they can to help give back to their homeland and contribute to its future development. The meeting was attended by the Under Secretary of His Highness the Crown Prince, Diwan for Local Affairs, Sheikh Ahmed Al Jabr Al Abdullah Subah. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received at Chief Palace today, Chairman of the Spanish Club Atletico Madrid, Dr. Enrique Cerozo Torres, who was accompanied by Mr. Khalid Nasser Al Rodan, Chairman of the Organizing Committee of the Al Rodan Football Tournament. His Highness welcomed the President of Atletico Madrid Sporting Club as a, as a guest of the State of Kuwait pointing out that sport is one of the fields that brings people closer together, facilitating the integration of civilizations. His Highness also praised the Spanish club's expertise and export skills. The meeting was attended by His Excellency Under Secretary of His Highness the Crown Prince, Diwan for Protocols and Ceremonies, Sheikh Mbarak Salem Lahmoud al-Subah. Kuwait's National Assembly Speaker and Chairman of the Arab Interparliamentary Union, Marzouk al Ghanim, headed for the Egyptian capital Cairo to attend an extraordinary meeting that is expected to focus on the role of the Arab parliaments amid the escalating Israeli bombardment of Gaza, which has so far killed and wounded hundreds of Palestinian civilians. Sarah Faris Group has more in this report. 
The state of Kuwait has requested from the Arab League to hold an extraordinary ministerial meeting and the Arab Interparliamentary Union, or the AIPU, to hold an emergency parliamentary meeting to discuss the deteriorating situation in the region. As a result, the past few days saw the country's legislative and executive authorities hold a flurry of preparatory meetings. The emergency joint meeting, which was convened between the legislative and executive authorities, was very positive. During the meeting, the first deputy premier and foreign minister briefed the lawmakers on the regional situation, while the deputy prime minister, interior minister and acting minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs spoke about the internal affairs. Then we heard briefings from the Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense, the Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, the Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs and Acting Minister of Justice, the Minister of Oil and the Minister of Health, who shared the latest local and foreign developments in all their respective sectors. I would also like to inform you in my capacity as Chairman of the Arab Interparliamentary Union that an emergency meeting will be held at the Arab League in Cairo on Thursday at 11 a.m. to discuss the latest developments in the occupied Palestinian territories. The meeting was approved by the Secretary General of the Arab League, Mr. Nabil al-Arabi, to gather the heads of Arab parliaments. I hope that we will come up with practical mechanisms that would alleviate the suffering of our brothers in Gaza. Also, some 20 days have passed since a month-long deadline was set by the State Audit Bureau inviting people to present evidence that could prove allegations of corruption at the judiciary. There are only 10 days left and we will have something else to say if none of the claimants come forward with documents or evidence proving the illegal money transfers. Heading the State of Kuwait's delegation at the Emergency Arab League meeting was First Deputy Premier and Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, where he underscored Kuwait's strong support for international protection of the Palestinians while announcing a 10 million US dollar donation for the Palestinian people. <laughs> All those in attendance, including the seven ministers and 39 MPs, signify the general importance of this meeting to discuss and follow up on the internal and external developments. There are several issues that are currently affecting the region as well as the state of Kuwait, where we need to primarily unify stances and exchange viewpoints with both authorities for the safety and stability of the country. I would also like to thank the speaker for his kind invitation and all those who attended. We benefited from all the information and opinions which provide us with new opportunities to find solutions for the local and regional issues. We agreed to continue these meetings due to their importance for both the government and the parliament. Under the chairmanship of the Kuwaiti National Assembly Speaker Marzouk Ali al Ghanem, the AIPU meeting will also discuss the means of communicating with international parliaments, mainly the U.S. Congress and the European Parliament, to take action to end the Israeli aggression against the Palestinians, as well as collective humanitarian assistance to aid them. From the National Assembly Building, this is Sarah Glub reporting for English News. The Ministry of Interior announced today that all the necessary preparations and security and traffic measures have been completed for the last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan. In a statement to the press and acting director of the, the acting director of the security media at the Ministry of Interior, Brigadier Adil Hashash, said that the Deputy Premier, Minister of Interior and Acting Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Mohammed Khalid al Hamad al-Subah, directed the different sectors in the ministry to take all the necessary measures and implement them under the supervision of the Interior Under Secretary, Lieutenant General Sleiman al fahed they pointed out that all governorates in Kuwait would witness intense presence of security men in full coordination between the various sectors, including the traffic department. Brigadier al Hashar said that adequate forces from the criminal police department will be available to avert any act against public order. 
He, however, called on the citizens not to leave any valuables inside their vehicles. Less than a day after a ceasefire seemed possible, Israel warned tens of thousands of Gaza residents to leave their homes ahead of fresh strikes. Earlier in the day, Israeli forces intensified air attacks on Hamas targets in the Gaza Strip, leaving at least three people killed in Khan Yunus. Palestinian health officials said the Palestinian death toll in nine days of fighting rose to at least 204 today, with some 1,450 wounded. Our correspondent in Gaza, Majd al wahidi has more details in the following report. In Gaza, Israeli forces continue to target different sites. Since midnight, the airstrikes killed 11 Palestinians, bringing the death toll over 200 Palestinians. Houses, hospitals, military sites and agricultural lands are targeted by Israel's military. Meanwhile, the Israeli Air Force warned thousands of Palestinians in the northern eastern Gaza Strip to evacuate their homes. I was sleeping when our uncle called us to evacuate our home. They wanted to bomb the house of Al Zahar near us, but they also bombed our house before we left. Now I'm so scared. Since eight days, Israeli military has launched Operation Protective Edge to target militants who fire a barrage of rockets into Israeli cities. Israel, who killed hundreds of Palestinian civilians and destroyed more than 500 houses, accepted the truce proposal offered by Egypt. But Hamas refused any ceasefire. Well, the ceasefire proposal actually wasn't uh, given to uh, the Palestinian factions uh, officially. We heard about it in the media. And uh, when we looked at this uh, proposal, we didn't find that it included the requirements and the rights that the Palestinians are looking for. We're talking about uh, having a free community living without uh, any siege, opening the borders, implementing the agreement of 2012 and the uh, agreement of the prisoner exchange. All that wasn't included in this proposal. After a rocket fire killed an Israeli civilian, Israeli Prime Minister vowed to escalate Israel's military campaign against Gaza. However, speculations over a possible grand incursion remain, with no clear end in sight. Under siege and constant fears of death, Gaza's 1.8 million residents say the so-called Operation Protective Edge is the worst nightmare that has ever happened to them and their children. Majlou Hadi, Kuwait TV, Gaza. Iraq's Prime Minister Nouri al-Malki today welcomed the election of a parliament speaker which he said was the first step in forming a new government amid an increasing threat from militants who have taken over large swaths of the country. During his weekly televised speech, al-Malki also called on the new legislative body to put aside political rivalries and work together to pass pending laws and to coordinate with the executive body. The remarks came a day after the parliament broke their deadlock by choosing a speaker for parliament as well as two new deputies. Meanwhile, violence continued across the country as Iraqi security forces destroyed many of the defensive positions of the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant militants, killing dozens of them in an assault on the city of Tikrit. <coughs> Syrian President Bashar al-Assad was sworn in today, marking the start of his three seven-year term in office amid a bloody civil war that has ravaged the Arab country. Syrian state TV broadcast was, was or said it was a live ceremony during which al-Assad took the oath of office. The inauguration followed elections in June in which al-Assad was said officially to have won almost 90% of the votes in what, was, in what many Western countries called a sham. But even as he prepared for a new term, the rebels fired five mortar shells into Damascus, killing four people. And moving on to Afghanistan, where officials have begun investigating one of the deadliest attacks in the country in recent years, in which at least 42 people were killed in a suicide bombing at a busy market in a, a day earlier. The attack, which followed another blast targeting a presidential palace media staff bus in Kabul, highlights the fragile security situation Afghanistan faces as NATO progressively withdraws its 50,000 remaining combat troops. There was no immediate claim of responsibility and the Taliban that have increased attacks on foreign and Afghan security forces denied they were behind the blast. An army truck collided with a taxi in Indian-controlled Kashmir today, killing seven people and triggering violent protests. The accident, which is being investigated, took place on a busy highway on the outskirts of Srinagar, the region's main city. 
Shortly afterwards, hundreds of local residents hurled drugs at the army convoy while soldiers fired live ammunition in the air and used rubber bullets and tear gas to disperse protesters. Elsewhere in the region, an Indian border guard was killed by firing from Pakistani border officers while three other guards and three civilian porters were wounded. Kashmir has been racked for decades by a conflict stemming from a large restive population that wants to either secede from India or join Pakistan. The IFAF U19 Championship is entering its final stages with tonight seeing who will get to take home the bronze and gold for this year tournament. Our reporter Badria Saleh was at Al Nasr Stadium last night to see how the payoffs for the 5th and 7th place rankings turned out. A night ahead of medal game day and it was a battle to see which teams would place 5th and 7th in the world rankings. The first game of the night saw Japan and France battle it out for 5th place at Al Nasr Stadium. With a final score of 30-7, to Japan took 5th, leaving France in 6th place. Both teams were full of anticipation ahead of the second game that saw Kuwait and Germany go head-to-head -head for seventh. Oh, it's uh, very warm, so uh, very unusual for us, but it's a great experience to be here in Kuwait and we have fun. Uh, it's been a, a, a great experience for me and my for team, you know. It's a uh, like, good thing for future plans, you know. We can get a whole lot of experience from this championship. Kuwait and Germany both played hard, and in the end, Germany took seventh with a final score of 76 to 0. The U19 World Championship ends on the 16th. It's Austria versus Mexico for the bronze, while undefeated world champion Canada will go head to head with the US for the gold. At Al Nasr Stadium, I'm Bedri Al Saleh reporting for the English News. Moving on to the local financial news, where after two days of negative performance, the three main indices of Kuwait Stock Exchange ended the trading session in green, with the price index gaining six points to reach 7,111 points. The KSX 15 index also gained five points and settled at the level of 1,172 points. The share of the Pearl of Kuwait Real Estate Company was the top gainer of the day, while that of Kuwait United Poultry Company was the top decliner. And in our final item tonight, on the occasion of this holy month of Ramadan, the Sman Diabetes Institute, founded by Kuwait Foundation of the Advancement of Sciences, KFAS, in 2006, and in collaboration with Kuwait Diabetes Society, organized a Girgaan celebration for children and youth with type 1 diabetes, consisting of various segments including both educational and recreational activities. The guests received complimentary education and nutritional counseling, as well as joining in numerous games and activities, winning prizes and spreading their contagious smiles. However, it did not deter from the concept and the main focus of the event, which was to promote and enhance the experience of Ramadan instead of the traditional emphasis on food and sweets. Sarah Faris Gop has more in, on this report. The Nutrition Department at the Sman Diabetes Institute, or DDI, in cooperation with the Kuwait Diabetes Society, held their annual Girgaan event for children with diabetes and their families in Kuwait, an important tradition in the Gulf region during the holy month of Ramadan, where children dressed in traditional costumes are given special sweets and candies. Uh, we have uh, the number of, uh, unfortunately, the number of diabetes, with the, which is with the children, in a type 2, is quite a lot and it's very difficult to, to deal with this at this stage. But we are happy to see them, that they come here, they know to, where to go, and they will learn a lot of things in, in their life in, in here. And this will be done once a year for them to, to come and go. We do other activities with them we are doing, which we will also teach them how to eat, what to eat, and how to make sure the type 2 diabetes doesn't go into their, to their level of the of, the, of their life. This is a, an event which is recently we have started doing it in Kuwait and it will have a lot of effect on the children when they understand what they do and what they don't do. This uh, program which is a Girgaan event for children with diabetes um, from the SMAN patients and from the society so we would like to, to 
host them here to let them know that they can lead normal lives, they can enjoy life, they can uh, attend different events, they can be physically active, they can choose to eat whatever they want as long as they learn how to match their insulin to their carbohydrate. That's why we have plenty of games here to encourage the physical activity. We have cultural games to, to uh, keep um, the spirit of Girgaan and we have these special Girgaan bags that have candy, have chocolates, have healthy nuts and have the amount of carbohydrates they're supposed to be having. And at the same time, we have, uh, we're encouraging actually volunteers. So we have two groups of volunteers, Sawaidna and Mustajid USA, who uh, kindly volunteered to help run the activities with us. And we have a program called uh, the SMAN um, Student Ambassadors. They are students at the university level who are training at the SMAN. The event, which aims to instill awareness on the alternative ways to enjoy Girgaan and other similar events, was characterized by teamwork from both DDI and the society, as well as youth involvement from Kuwaiti volunteer youth groups and the SMAN student ambassador program, thus reflecting a unified Kuwaiti society during this holy month. I am a research intern here at the Sman Diabetes Institute and uh, there was an opportunity here to celebrate Girgian with children you know who are unfortunate and have diabetes and you know it's it's a struggle for them to eat and to have candy on a regular basis so we're helping them here to have a good time to experience Girgian and you know to have the fun of it and it's a great opportunity for them the event was brought to life by several activities for all age groups, including games, performances, henna and face painting, balloon making and interactions with various traditional Kuwaiti characters related to Ramadan. Finally concluding with the distribution of Gurgaan gift bags and prizes to all the attendees. Dasman Diabetes Institute and Kuwait Diabetes Society have organized their annual Girgaan celebration for children with diabetes and their families. And although the event was filled with entertainment, games and fun activities, it was also educational, upholding the Institute's main objectives of raising awareness and educating all segments of the public on this widespread disease. From Dasman Diabetes Institute, this is Sarah Glove reporting for English News. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. Well, with that, we conclude our news bulletin. Thank you for joining us. Have a pleasant time. I'm Maham Tawa. Before we go, we remind you once again of our main stop stories. Have a pleasant time and good night. The National Assembly Speaker leaves for Cairo to chair the emergency session of the Arab Parliamentary Union. The Ministry of Interior announces that all preparations are underway for the last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan. Israel warns thousands of Palestinians in Gaza to evacuate as it resumes airstrikes. And Bashar al-Assad is sworn in for a third seven-year term as President of Syria.